Cat. It's Maximus here, this time with a little review of this little bonus they call an electrical test kit here. And uh, it is made in China, but includes two units with the RT210. They do have an RT250, which has like a display, which is ultimately why I'd recommend for 20 bucks. This kit is 20 bucks, and I guess it's handy in the sense that you do have a GFCI testing. Uh, this is just a little outlet tester, lets you know if it's wired correctly. The button on it is for like bathroom or kitchen outlets where they have like the little test and reset. This you can press and actually make sure that your GFCI is working. So you press this button and then the little test and reset on the outlet should actually pop out. And then what we have here is a real simple voltage tester. I call these ladder testers. Kind of like this uh, Fluke T2, although this is also, I definitely, right. If you like these testers and I'd recommend spending the money and get a T2. The big issue with this is I was testing it, and they somehow got the darn thing wired up incorrectly. Or wired up wrong, and I'll show you what I mean in a second here. But this uh, really pretty basic unit. It's not a lot else to talk about. Let me, so you can see, plug this in, and it works properly. I have this cord is plugged into an isolation transformer so the ground neutral is broken so that the isolation transformer can actually do its isolating and you'll only have one light it's interesting when you press on a non-gfci when you press the button you get a red light what i do find interesting is even though in this situation come on camera you get a red light here when you're doing it normally you press it and you'll get a red light there letting you know that it's actually trying to activate the GFCI. And so I kind of like this extra indicator. That's something some of these others, like these Sperry's, don't do. You can also see where, like, the Sperry, it's kind of partially telling me that the line is good, but it's dimmer. And that's and it also does the same thing, turns red when you do that. And this is a little bit annoying. I find a bit of an inconsistency here. Whereas this Sperry, even though it also has a little bit of illumination. It's certainly not very much. I don't know why this darn camera won't focus once again. But with the Klein, it does seem to at least work properly there where there is no illumination on this unit whatsoever. Although I've had it sitting here for a minute and it's starting to glow a little bit. So it's just kind of a funny thing that happens. Let me show this thing real fast. It does have little connectors. Man, my camera is like the biggest piece of crud when it's not a lot of light. See that? As soon as I get plenty of light, the camera works. Anyway, a basic voltage tester. It's AC and DC compatible. Has a little pocket clip. Various different voltages. You have a couple little probes. And this is just for making sure you have outlets and that type of stuff. Just kind of general household stuff. I do like that it has removable little protector caps and the fact that they did make it relatively smart to where you can put them in both like this and if you need to in, in a more safe fashion you can connect it to an outlet and it just has like a series of circuits in there so the higher the voltage the more up this goes. The only thing I didn't really like about this one is simply the fact that one if you get a little bit of funkiness there you can see there's two LEDs but they kind of do a little bit of weird stuff. I don't really understand what's going on with this thing. And you can kind of see where it's... See, these lights are supposed to be on the left for AC and on the right for DC. And it kind of does them both. I don't think the circuitry in this is really <laughs> properly done. Or maybe this is a defective unit. But that's what I found. You kind of fiddle with it. And you get a little bit different results. And that's probably the biggest issue, is if this is how this thing works, uh, I'm going to be pretty darn disappointed because it's defective, and that's probably the easiest way. So I have a power supply here at 30.6 volts, which is as high as I can go, but this is supposed to do down to 32 volts. If I do what's proper here, and whoop, <laughs> I was doing it backwards already. And if I put the red... And the black, obviously here, what do we see? The little LEDs on the left, which doesn't make sense. 
if I reverse it, put red to black and black to red, which is what you're not supposed to do, the LED is now on the right. So as far as I'm concerned, this is the effective unit. That's not how it's supposed to work. Here we have a fluke. Let me zoom in a little bit here. We have the Fluke T2. When I put red to red and black to black. First thing, this Fluke does use batteries because it has a continuity tester, but I like that because then it's more simple. It doesn't have a dimming stack. It's just a straight up stack. It's telling me that I'm in the D. It's not AC. It's DC. I'm positive to positive, so I have it wired correctly. And it's telling me that I'm it's not reaching 36, so it's only going to tell me that I'm at 24, even though I'm actually at 30 volts. If I reverse this, a couple things happen. One, if you listen, it'll give me just a little quick chirp, letting me know that I'm, at, I'm measuring a DC voltage, but that the polarity is reversed. My, my red is to, to black, as we can see there. So obviously... This is a much more reliable unit than this damn thing, which when you put red, when you wire it up correctly, it moves one LED over to the AC side. So that's all I really wanted to say. I don't know if this unit is burned out or something like that or damaged because I did get this as an open box. Um, but if this is you know the way it works normally, uh, then it's certainly defective and I would stay well away from it. As a matter of fact, let's take a quick look inside. I'm just going to knock this thing apart. I'm not going to end up... Uh, I'll keep this thing because I think it's neat and useful, but this, uh, either it's defective. I mean, I have to buy another one to see if it behaves the same way. If it is and it's just a straight-up design or manufacturing defect. Um, but, but I couldn't believe Klein would do that where the LEDs would be wrong. You'd think it would have been tested. So I'm going to, at this point, until I run into another one of these things, just assume that I just had the unfortunate luck of getting one that is defective. We do have a little kind of shield to kind of, I guess, enhance the lights. The clip is actually a separate component here. Kind of interesting. Well, this board certainly doesn't look torn up or damaged or anything like that. It is custom ET45 2018 726, so it's not that old. There's our dual LEDs. I know that these things are known as Zener diodes, but I don't know exactly how they all work to make the whole lights go or why in particular it's reversed. So I have to chalk it up as being, you know, a bad unit because black is indeed connected to black, as it says right here on the board. Not much on the back of it at all. Most of the stuff is just done right here, right up front. A couple of precision wire round resistors. These are five bands, so we know they're precision. And those are big ones. Those are like one watt resistors, so uh, it seems to be relatively well made. Too bad it doesn't work right. <laughs> right where this thing actually does seem to work okay anyway and this thing's permanently like glued or uh with ultrasonically welded that's how they attach plastic stuff a lot of people think they use adhesives they don't they just have a machine that puts both halves puts just a little bit of pressure and then literally it runs like a pretty high frequency something you know, or a relatively high i don't know if it's 10 kilohertz or 50 kilohertz but it actually vibrates and just causes friction, making the plastic weld itself. Anyway, that's my little review of this Klein ET45VP uh, electrical test kit. Bottom line, had issues with this, like this, but nonetheless, I would get the RT250, which actually is like one of these, but it has a display on it. I'll end up ordering that someday. Anyway... I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Till next time, Caddis Maximus out.